There's a lot happening in the Florida State ACC lawsuits. Let's get into it. Conference realignment is always in the news, so we're back on the big mountain to keep you updated. Hey, welcome back on the mountain. I am JY, and this is my good friend Steve. And Steve, it's been two weeks yeah. since we have done an FSU ACC update. And my goodness, there's news all over the place yes. right now. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give a brief summary of, of what has come out this week. Had some filings from uh, the ACC here early this week. FSU, I think, just put one out. Uh, and in response uh, on Wednesday, the main gist of this episode is going to be what FSU put out in terms of their reply in support of its of their motion to dismiss in North Carolina. That was done last Friday. Um, I want to take one thing at a time because yeah. this could be a two hour episode if we did them did them all at once. Uh, but let's get into just real briefly what kind of went on here at the beginning of this week and the filings, and then we'll jump into that that uh, support of their mo- FSU support of their motion. On Monday, March 13th, the ACC met their deadline by making four filings in Leon County, Florida. So what I'm going to start off with here is in the Florida lawsuit, and then we're going to jump to the North Carolina lawsuit. But this is in Florida. Um, Just as a reminder, on March 4th, FSU and the ACC jointly agreed to stay discovery in the North Carolina case until after the motion to dismiss hearing on March 22nd. That was something we didn't, we haven't talked about yet. They actually both agreed on March 4th. They jointly agreed that they're going to stay any discovery in North Carolina until the judge rules on a potential dismissal or stay. However, FSU refused to agree to an identical stay for discovery in the Florida case. The ACC thought FSU would do the same, and they pulled a fast one, um, and have filed discovery requests in Florida, to which a response was needed by April 9th, the date of the motion uh, to dismiss the hearing in Florida. So the ACC had to respond to this discovery request prior to the hearing for the motion in Florida. And that's the main reason for some of these filings filings we had the beginning of this week. The first filing was a request to stay discovery in Leon County until after the hearing. So they're still moving forward, the ACC, requesting this stay. We'll see what happens. Who knows? The other three filings that the ACC did in Florida were motions in objection to FSU's request for production, interrogates, and the first request for admission. So basically, their response to the items for discovery were all just no, line all by does. line, objection, 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 and they say why. We're going to get into this in more detail, a lot more detail. I think there's 40-some uh, different line items with that. We're going to do an update on that Monday. Including, as a yes. teaser, okay. one is a, the executed copy of the grant of rights. I saw that, mm-hmm. yes. So, yeah, we're, we're going to deep dive into all of that stuff, both what uh, FSU is asking for, and also what the ACC is objecting to. Uh, We're going to have that out for you guys Monday, maybe Tuesday, but you're going to try to get that out on Monday, though. So let's get into the gist of this episode, which, again, is the FSU reply in support of their motion to dismiss or stay in North Carolina. Filed on Friday, March 8th in Mecklenburg County. Uh, so if you remember, they, they filed a motion to dismiss or stay originally. The ACC replied to that motion to dismiss or stay. And now FSU, kind of the third round, is replying to the reply to the motion to stay, basically. So it's a back and forth motions, you know, uh, trying to, to, to pick apart the arguments of, of the other sides. The hearing here in North Carolina, as I mentioned before, is, is to be on March 22nd. That's next Friday already. Um, and, and really, it's going to answer the question, the two big questions that we keep talking about here, Steve, venue and jurisdiction. Also remember that motion to stay in Florida. And again, that is for April 9th, as I said, that's Leon County uh, with the Honorable John C. Cooper down there in Florida. In this new filing in North Carolina, FSU claims that the ACC admitted to and confirms that they defied their own constitution 
and members when they filed suit on De uh, December 21st, 2023 in North Carolina. Also, the ACC prematurely initiated this action in an attempt to control venue. FSU states that the ACC cannot undo or salvage this fatal flaw, and as a result, lacked standing when it originally filed suit. Because of this, they deprived the North Carolina court of subject matter jurisdiction and rendered their suit a nullity. FSU points out that ACC's general counsel sent a letter to the FSU board's general counsel on January 12th, 2024, the same date that the ACC claims they held this meeting to approve the a first amended complaint. I'm going to get into those letters just a little bit at the very end of, of uh, my update here. Also, even uh, with this, FSU states that the ACC is still unable to show an actual controversy existed or that the NC, uh, North Carolina court has jurisdiction over FSU or a proper party has been named or F the FSU board owing a fiduciary duty to the ACC or that this would be uh, not be a substantial injustice to permit this case to go forward. So all of those items are what they're saying is, is for uh, dismissal here. They then go into some details. So they, they get into lack of standing. They get into this prematurely filed. Some things that we've talked about before, but they add a little more color to it. Anything you want to chime in before I get into those, Steve? I'll hold my thoughts till the end. Okay, so let's get into them. The first one here, ACC confirms its lack of standing. Basically, the ACC did not have standing because they failed to comply with their own constitution and they admitted this, that they did not provide notice for a meeting and then conducted a meeting uh, and did not conduct a meeting with a quorum to obtain the two-third approval from its members in order to file a material litigation back in December of 2023. FSU then lays out several court cases that supports their position. They also state the Uniform Unincorporated Nonprofit Association Act that the ACC is using to justify their position ignores more direct decisions that are much more on point to this case. Basically saying, you're ignoring some other cases that quite frankly make a lot more sense with where we are right now than this this unincorporated nonprofit associations act again up for a judge to determine that but they get into several nc cases north carolina cases peninsula homestead atkinson are decisions that they say are much closer to the issues at hand in this case they state that in the face of these precedents the acc relegates to these nonsensical arguments such as claiming this is not a material litigation but then doing an about face and having the members then vote on January 12th because the amended claims now make for a material dispute. Also, citing several cases, sub subsequent events cannot confer standing retroactively. This is something that you asked several episodes ago. Is it something that they can do retroactively? FSU saying, no, they can't. Um, and this could be pretty big. Again, a judge is going to have to rule on this. Um, but which are the correct cases here? You know, obviously FSU's put forth several that they say are much more meaningful in this regard. The ACC has put forth some. I've seen some lawyers opine that what ACC has put forth is somewhat weak. Uh, I haven't seen anybody opine on the FSU, uh, what they're presenting as cases yet. Uh, but, you know, I, I think both that and this whole past practice thing, if it did need member approval for standing and and retroactively retroactively isn't isn't allowed that could be a problem for for the acc again at this point it's just two sides going to be completely disagreeing on this we'll see where the judge at is at on that um they go into then this prematurely filed lawsuit was premised on the florida action fsu basically is saying that if fsu never went forward with their lawsuit in florida then the nc lawsuit would be mute and need to be dismissed because it was done uh, basically to get ahead of the Florida filing. My opinion on this is that's, that's, that's an oversimplification, I've said this before, of what the ACC is filing in North Carolina. 
yes, I, I know why they're making this. They're making this argument because of venue and jurisdiction. Mm-hmm. I understand that. But there's more to the ACC case than just that. So this one doesn't hold a, a ton of water for me, but I fully understand why they're doing it. The next item they talk about is the FSU board is not subject to jurisdiction in North Carolina, saying the farmer case that was presented by the ACC does not apply to the FSU board. They go on to state that there was no express waiver as to any jurisdiction outside of Florida, and FSU did not waive sovereign immunity. Again, just two sides saying two completely different things in terms of jurisdiction, We'll see what happens with the judge. The next item, the complaint fails to name the proper party. Uh, this one, I, I laugh at this one. I don't, uh, it's just silly. But basically they say the ACC failed to name FSU as the contractual party, but named the board of trust, the FSU board of trustees as the contractual party. Oh, good gracious. It's like, you got to dot these I's and cross these T's, but it don't matter about those I's and those T's. And that's from both sides. This isn't just a knock on FSU. Yeah, yeah. The details matter when they work for you. The details sure. don't matter when they don't work for you. Um, the last thing I'll get into, because the ACC admits that it filed the suit for the purpose of controlling venue, it should be dismissed or stayed. FSU states that this is precisely the type of suspect litigation conduct that has not and should not be condoned. FSU states that they have detailed out the substantial injustice that would occur and request that a minimum uh, and request at a minimum that this action be brought by the ACC be stayed in favor of the Florida action. If you remember a, a substantial chunk of the ACC uh, kind of response to this dismissal was about this substantial injustice they basically said they didn't show any substantial injustice. Again, FSU said, oh, we showed tons of it. So uh, I'm done with this pissing match. Let's get to the 22nd so we can get a ruling on this. Mm -hmm. The last thing I want to talk about, Steve, are the letters. I said I would get back to that, and then I'll throw it to you. Attached to this were the two letters sent by the two general counsels. Um, Overall, they're a big pissing match like we've seen in a lot of this. Uh, about whether or not there is a conflict of interest at play right now and if and how FSU will continue to be an active member of the ACC board. Remember, the Constitution for the ACC lays out conflict of interest processes only after a notice of withdrawal has been given. As of today, FSU has not issued a notice of withdrawal so they are still a member and those conflict of interest processes in the constitution don't apply so it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out moving forward that's it what you got steve okay so uh, i have uh, just (coughs) just a couple overall general thoughts well first of all my 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 overall thought is like you said this is just back and forth pissing match we'll see what goes in what happens in north carolina first um, as far as, you know, claiming jurisdiction, trying to get the stay, yeah. trying to go in the state you want to go first, whatever. Um, and it's just back and forth and, you know, move, counter move, like we've talked about it. And some of these arguments, you again, you can have, uh, you can have a pool of attorneys side with one, yeah. one side and a pool with the other, and then some will be in the middle. Um, and it's just going to be up to a judge to see how he determines. Mm-hmm. Now, but there's two things that really stand out. To me okay um first of all the issue of jurisdiction um i i've never put a bunch of i never put much weight or much stock in the um that they didn't have authorization that the board vote didn't happen yeah maybe i'm totally wrong on this yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I may end up being totally wrong and the judge says you know what you're right they didn't vote on it they didn't give notice they didn't have the meeting i just i i i i, I think that was easily remedied and they yeah. already did remedy it yeah. Um, so I've never put a lot of stock in that, but it's possible that I'm wrong. So we'll see on that. But for with that, I, I think there's many outs that make sense yes. for the ACC. It right. doesn't mean they're going to get them, but I right. agree with you. I think there's several outs, yep. several open doors that potentially a judge could walk through with that. Yes. And I agree. So that leads me the other way on the jurisdiction issue of, of a North Carolina court over the FSU board yep. and the whole idea of sovereign immunity. Um I, I've I've said all along that I I really think that this is going to be a huge 
uh, deciding factor. And, and this gives the North Carolina judge, and I know I'm repeating myself from other videos, yeah. gives them an out on this uh, for them to say, you know what? This is a public institution who's claiming sovereign immunity. They're claiming they didn't give it up right. under the state of Florida laws. Right. So I'm going to issue a stay here and send it over to Florida to let the Florida uh, judges determine the Florida law and how it should be applied. Um, to me, that is their bigger, much greater chance for Florida State to get it pushed over mm -hmm. than the whole idea of when the board voted, to, you know, when, if they gave due notice of a meeting and when they gave notice. Yeah. Uh, when they voted on it. Yeah. So that's just kind of, that's just my opinion. And I might be totally wrong. So I know last time I said that, there was a lot of people who were like, no, <laughs> blah, 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 whatever. So that's just, that's how I feel on that. Um, and then as far as the, uh, we, we've talked about this many times, the, the kind of little games and shenanigans that they're playing, yeah. filing first, trying to get it in the venue they want. I think it's very smart with Florida State. So they're asking for discovery in Florida. Yeah, they're not asking yeah. for discovery in North Carolina, which I think is really really interesting. And they 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 you know they're agreeing to the stay on discovery in North Carolina. Yeah, which I'm sure if they don't get the the stay there, they will go forward with discovery. But I think this is really smart because. The North Carolina case is scheduled. The next hearing is April or March twenty second. Right. Florida is April 9th. April 9th. Yep. So this allows them to kind of, if they could, if they can move forward with discovery, it may allow them to kind of to even out the cases where they're happening more at the same time, um, because which is which is a total possibility. Both sure. sides are asking for it just to move on one state or the other. But there is the potential where the North Carolina judge says it's going to happen here and the Florida judge says, no, it's going to happen here. And both cases move forward simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So I think this is good strategy if you're on the FSU side to, to go for discovery in Florida. And um, I know we're going to do on another episode, so I'm not, we're not going to get into it too much today. Mm -hmm. But some of the, the items they're asking for in discovery, I think, are really interesting. I'm yeah. looking forward to doing that episode. We teased that one of the things, are, there's the actual executed copy of the grant of rights, right. which is huge. Um, and I'll tease one other thing is some of the things they're asking for, Florida State is saying that if they can get the, the documents that they're looking for, they can prove fraud on the part of the ACC, which um, we talked about statute of limitations right. in North Carolina. Right. If there is any uh, indication of fraud, that actually... Uh, nullifies the Correct. statute of limitations, which could be a huge thing. So we don't want to get too far down that road. Yeah. Uh, I think that's interesting, and I'm looking forward to that part. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the North Carolina yeah. judge says. Is you know, we're going to have it here? We're going to punt it to the state of Florida? But really, I think the the fun stuff coming down the road is the discovery motions, what they're looking for, and I'm looking forward to when we do that episode. Well, and and to your point about um, you know moving forward with the FSU lawsuit, and I'm sure some of it is a timing thing. Let's get these mm -hmm. as close to even as possible if they're both going to move forward yep. together. I don't know if we don't know yet if there are or not, but they want to close that timeline yes. gap as much as possible. That makes sense. But it also, it also just uh, goes into everything they've been saying, this is a Florida case. Mm -hmm. So as of right now, discovery's happening in Florida. Right. You know, the timelines have to, to be met for case. It's yeah. strengthening yes. their case because, yep. see, we told you this should have been, forget the whole idea yes. that they've agreed to, to stay the discovery in North yes. Carolina, which is true, yes. but that's not what they're right. going to paint. They're going to here paint, nor there. Exactly. Yeah. They're going to paint that we're moving forward in Florida because that's what we've said all yeah. the time. And we've got this figure out. This We're hearing it where it should be. I mean, it is, it is going right into that you know, the FSU's notebook. It may not matter, right. but well played by them right now. Exactly. And and well, we, we, we've said all along, well played by North Carolina to get their suit, I mean, by ACC, yeah. to get their suit in first in the state of North Carolina. This is Florida State's counter move to yes, that. Yes, uh, To kind of even the score. Absolutely. You know, you mentioned you're, you might be repeating yourself. I think half of what I talked yeah. about here is repeating myself because they're repeating themselves. But I also think it's important because they keep adding some more information. Mm -hmm. You know, with this, we found out a little bit more about uh, when when the um, ACC members did vote, you know, these letters back and forth from the general general counsel I found to be kind of interesting. So we're still, we're getting little bits and pieces here and there. I know there is repetitive types of stuff, but you kind of have to repeat some things in order for it to make sense. So that's kind of where we're at. K JY, I got a yeah. question for okay. you. So normally we don't like to go rumor mill too much. Yes, okay? Okay. We're going to stick to the facts, just the facts and only the facts, okay. right? Yeah. What do you think about, I, I, I've, I've heard a little bit of rumor mill from, 
uh, uh, material from from one of my contacts at Penn State. Okay. Uh, what do you think about me throwing that little little rumor out there at the end of this? If you want to, okay, it's up to you. It's your rumor. All right. So, okay. So so recently, I, I uh, talked to one of my contacts at Penn State um, that I have, you know, through my professional uh, job, my everyday job, um, and from what that contact is hearing, they are expecting Florida State um, to be in the Big Ten and starting Big Ten play in either 2026 football year or 2027. Okay. Said absolutely no go for 24 or 25. Interesting. It's just not going to happen. But they're already looking at that. They're, the expectation is on the lower levels, the people that the ADs and the people have to make schedule yeah. schedules is that they're going to start, they're going to have to look at changing the schedule for 2026 or modifying it to mm. Uh, to allow the Florida State to enter league play in there. So just heard that. I, we're, let's not take that as gospel, you know, similar to something we in, a, in another video. But right. it's a little interesting tidbit that I thought maybe our Florida State and ACC fans would find interesting. Yeah, that's, that's excellent. We always like little tidbits like yeah. that. So, hey, just as a reminder, we are doing live episodes every week, Wednesday evenings, 8.30. If you can join us, please come on the Big Mountain. We're going to be focused on the live episodes on the, the Big Ten and the Mountain West. I'm sure we'll throw some ACC stuff in there as well, just an open discussion. But there's going to be a little bit more on our, our main focus, Big Ten, Mountain West stuff. So, hey, just as a reminder, make sure you give this episode a like. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. And we'll see you next time on the Big Mountain.